Hey guys, I'm working on putting the gutters up on the shed. I want to get some gutters. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I want to get some gutters up and try to at least get the rain collection to where it's collecting into the tank. Um, and so that's what I'm working on right now. So I made my first mistake. I got the gutters up. And this here is gutter guard. They make all, all different kinds of gutter guard, but I got this one specifically because you may or may not be able to see. It's got a little mesh on top of it. So it's not only got the big holes to stop leaves and sticks, but it's got a little mesh that stops smaller stuff like seeds and whatever else might be up on the roof when it first starts raining. So I got this one specifically for that purpose, but I'm learning with these Amish built buildings that uh, they're not built with the foresight of having gutters installed. And so I had to, I, I was supposed to put this underneath the roof first see and then install the gutters there's just too much room there's too much space that has to go under the gutter or under the roof too much of this has to go under the roof for me to be able to get it all up under the roof and still be able to snap onto the gutter so i'm gonna have to take this side off or at least loosen the bolts so i can get this underneath the roof so the water will flow on top of this instead of having it like this where the water is going to flow under it. So I got to get this under the roof and then reinstall this side of the gutter. Now I learned my lesson on the other side and uh, the other side's all completely finished and now I just need to get this gutter guard on this side and the gutters will be done then we can get into the PVC and just like that I've got gutters and they're on both sides they're they're up they go the full length they've got the gutter guard on um, so what we get into now is these outlets coming from the downspouts are gonna go into a big piece of PVC let me co coordinate myself here. There's going to be a big piece of PVC going right here, piping, plumbing. So all the water that gets collected from the gutters is going to go into this PVC pipe and it's going to get directed down into a hole which is going to be in the back of the building and it's going to go inside into my rain tank. Just like that we've got water going inside of the utility shed here so basically what I did was you can see the T there let me see yeah you can see the T right there that's gonna go down there's the end of my first flush diverter and then it comes out of the first flush diverter and I had to cut a four and a half inch hole in the back of the utility shed and that's where the water goes in and it's going to flow into the tank. And I'm going to take you inside here in a minute and show you how that's going to go. But first, I want to go over this first flush diverter. All right, so the first flush diverter comes with, it's actually a kit that you can buy, rainharvest.com, I think is the website. 
It's a kit that you can buy specifically designed for rain collection systems. So the first flush diverter comes with this T right here. It's got this little plate that fits up inside of this T. And what happens is once I put this section of pipe, the pipe does not come, the PVC does not come with the system because the length of the PVC is going to depend on the size of your roof and how many gallons you need to collect as a first flush. So it does not come with the pipe, but it does come with the end of the pipe here, which I've got it on there pretty well, but um, it comes with this piece and then all the way up to this piece. Now this is the bottom section, so it's actually going to go upside down like that. And as this fills up with water from the first flush, the first, uh, the first half an inch or so of rain, it's going to slowly leak out of this. That's how it drains, but not so fast that the clean water comes out through this. The clean water is going to go through this tee. Once this gets full, it'll go through the tee. This ball is going to float all the way up to the top, and it's going to block all of the stuff that it collected in this tube is going to get stuck in here because this ball is going to block it with that little insert inside the T. So it's going to block everything into this and all of the clean water is going to go through the T and into the tank. So that's how a first flush diverter works. That's why I have one. It's going to keep all the gunk off my roof from going into my tank. And there it is. The outside section is completely finished. I got it going from the gutters into the T up top there where it merges. And then all of the water from my roof goes down into this T, if I can coordinate here, into this T where that's my rain, that's the rain collection, the first flush diverter, where once this fills up, that ball is gonna go from the bottom it's going to slowly float up to the top, up to that little round piece. It's going to block everything. All the gunk is going to get stuck in this. And the clean water is going to pass right through that T and go into my tank. So I got the outside section done. I just need to go inside and take the piping from this into the tank. So here we are inside the shed and you can see where the rain, the rain collection system comes inside. I cut a four and a half inch hole and elbowed it, 90 degreed it to come inside. And then all I have to do from here is run a pipe from that elbow. And then I'm gonna 90, I'm gonna use another 90 degree elbow to take it down into the tank here. Um, this is a 275 gallon IBC tote. You can find them pretty cheap on Craigslist. Uh, basically it was used, this one, this one specifically was used to carry lime juice. Um, so it is, it, it, make sure it's a potable tank if you go looking to do this for yourself. Make sure it's, it had something, a, something consumable in it. Um, you don't want to get something that had oil or you know any, any kind of non-consumable item in it so make sure it's a potable uh, potable water tank um, like I said this one's 275 gallons and it's small but um, eventually I want to upgrade I'm gonna uh, go from this up to ultimately I want to have a five or six thousand gallon uh, system um, but this is what I'm starting with and so I'm going to come from that over to this, and I will see you in a second. So here it is. We've got rain collection. So all the water is going to come, go through the system outside. It's going to come in here, and it's going to go straight down into the tank. And this is where I'm going to be collecting. I, I started, I started uh, to paint the tank black. And the reason you do that is if you ever put a fish tank in front of a window, they tend to collect algae really quick. Um, it's the same thing with these tanks. If they're not painted green or black, um, they'll collect algae. Algae will grow inside, and I don't want that in this tank. Um, so I'm going to end up painting the, full, the whole tank black, even though it's inside. Um, well, the thing is, all this light is from the sun. I got the door open, and the door is facing where the sun comes up. Um, so... 
when I'm down here and this door is open, the sun's coming in, it's hitting this tank. And so I still, even though it's inside, I still want to paint it black uh, just to make sure, just to be sure I'm not going to have any algae growth um, inside this tank. But um, yeah, so we've got, we've got collection. We're going to start collecting. As soon as it starts raining, I'll start collecting water. Now that I've got water going into the tank, the next project on the long list of things to do is to start using the water. That's going to be the next video, so stick with me, and I will see you on the next one. Side note, I don't come from a construction background. I'm not a professional. I have no clue what I'm doing. So don't do what I do.